everyone. It's time for our last world region here, Oceania. This is going to be our shortest section yet, uh, largely because it's uh, just such a small continent when we have our discussion. Uh, so this is going to wrap up the course, uh, and uh, let's just get started and check this out. So first off, we have a political map, again, like we usually get started, showing us uh, what in the world's going on here? Uh, we have a ton of island nations, okay? So uh, that's going to be the number one landform or physical characteristic that we talk about in this, wor in this world region of Australia and the South Pacific or Oceania is going to be islands, 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 islands. Uh, so we have Australia, the world's largest island or the world's smallest continent, and uh, that's a debate there, but uh, it's a continent, the continent of Australia and this area, uh, but uh, again, world's largest island in terms of a uh, geo, uh, geographic uh, idea of an island. It's the largest island in the world, but uh, it's a continent, so it's not usually considered an island. Uh, you see here, uh, well, we'll talk about where people are staying, where people are living and stuff, but spoiler alert, it's in the southeast uh, of Australia. Nevertheless, two sort of larger uh, nations that we'll be dealing with when we talk about this region ever so briefly will be Australia and New Zealand. Uh, again, there's going to be a ton of different island nations, uh, some Marshall Islands, uh, the Micronesia, French Polynesia. We'll talk about places like Fiji and Samoa, Guam, Papua New Guinea, uh, which shares that uh, uh, island with uh, what was characterized last time in, in Southeast Asia. Uh, but nevertheless, we're going to get to And so this is our area. Also, if you remember Papua New Guinea from the movie, there once was an island. Uh, it was just uh, nearby. Uh, so without further ado, let's uh, get started here. Uh, we have uh, plenty to point out. But well, before we keep going, uh, notice Hawaii, U.S. Uh, a state, of course. Uh, and so it's sort of in this, in, in this area as well. Uh, of course, though, uh, it's uh, part of the United States is U.S. state, uh, but you can see the proximity of, of the South Pacific, Australia, and the others uh, now uh, sort of coming full circle, if you will, when we did our tour around the world. So here we are, part one, physical geography, like usual, here we go. Uh, well, uh, a lot of islands again, uh, still islands. Uh, we see some mountains here uh, in New Guinea. Uh, I, I, there's... Uh, so, so mountains in New Guinea, but uh, a lot of mountains uh, in New Zealand, peaks over 10,000 feet in some places. The Great Barrier Reef, perhaps you've heard of that, uh, the largest uh, collection of corals and coral reef uh, in the world. Uh, there in the Great Barrier Reef, uh, just off the Coral Sea and off the coast of Australia. We're in here in the Indian Ocean, in the, then the Pacific Ocean, South Pacific, as we largely even refer to the, uh, as the entire region. We talked about all those islands, 17,000 islands of Indonesia. Uh, and then again, we talk about uh, different chains of islands or archipelagos and island sets usually make up countries in this regard. So the Northern Mariana Islands, the United States, uh, Guam, uh, Wake Island out here. And then we're gonna talk about some, you know, there's the idea of between an atoll and an island is kind of important as the book does a good job sort of telling you about that. Uh, Hawaii, as we mentioned before, uh, and again, so something again to point out uh, the physical properties of uh, let's just say Australia for this case is our largest landmass. It's kind of challenging to talk about physical geography of some of these other places. Uh, perhaps something a little bit bigger like New Caledonia. But uh, here we are. So Western Australia, uh, Northern Territory, Queensland, South Wales, and South Australia. So uh, Perth, major city in Western Australia, uh, followed by uh, well. Again, our, our most important cities in Australia will be Canberra, Sydney, and Brisbane, uh, all in the you know, east coast, southeast uh, mainly, which is where the population is. This island of Tasmania, you've probably heard of that, uh, the Tasmanian Devil, um, uh, but Melbourne, Canberra, uh, Sydney, Brisbane, uh, and Perth. So these are our major cities uh, in Australia, but something uh, of importance is uh, Western Australia, largely not very densely populated. Uh, most of Western and Central Australia, we have the outback, uh, which is a geographic area, uh, very hot, it's, uh, so it's quite arid in this, in this regard. Uh, it's not exactly too conducive 
for, for human activity. Uh, so it's largely uh, uh, uninhabited, not totally uninhabited, it's just less inhabited, uh, less densely populated like the rest. So the population of Australia, just a little bit slightly larger than the state of Florida, uh, as, as a country, about 24 million people. The climate. Uh, so, well, again, we talk largely the island nations that I'm not going to be talking about. So, if you, if you will, just here, um, tropical, tropical climate type. Uh, and I just put my large swath of all these islands are largely going to be uh, tropical. Uh, nevertheless, we do have some climate variation in some of the larger land masses, which is what we're going to look at. Uh, so, we have humid subtropical. Uh, in parts of New Zealand and Southeast Australia, where that human population is. Uh, we have desert climate, largely in uh, Western Central Australia, like I just told you about in the, in the outback. And then we have some semi-arid arid areas around it. Humid continental, um, not de uh, depicted in this image because uh, this would be tropical here. So we have tropical climate type, Desert, semi-arid desert, uh, and humid subtropical uh, down below. Largest uh, this 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 uh, large uh, white cloud uh, is is fog cover over New Zealand. Uh, the Maori people that uh, came to New Zealand, they're indig they're uh, native inhabitants of New Zealand. While they only got there 700 years ago, they are the indigenous people of New Zealand. Uh, when they got there, they saw this uh, this long white uh, cloud in in and they uh, named it and it sort of has become uh, characteristic of New Zealand when and when people come by boat or plane uh, seeing this uh, and so there's dense you know, at one point there was dense uh, forest cover although humans have done a great job getting rid of that uh, but nevertheless a lot of rainfall in in these areas because uh, we have you know we're near well we got intertropical convergence zone we got monsoons we got a lot of rain specifically a lot of rain in this area the southeast uh, and and New Zealand and again largely climate type tropical you're gonna see tropical island nations uh, throughout the entire region so it's pretty simple so we're oversimplifying but it's 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 uh, it is a little bit simpler in this area where we just re really aren't seeing a lot of different climate types like we would have uh, in some other other regions so Australia's animal and plant life is a result of long physical isolation, large size, uh, arid climate. Um, and uh, we, so the book talks about marsupials largely. And so um, here we are, such as kangaroos, koalas, wombats, bandicoots, all common in the region. Seen here uh, is, is a kangaroo. Uh, We'll talk about that. Uh, well, I don't know if we will, to be honest. Here we are. Uh, but uh, kangaroos, maybe you'd imagine them like uh, the equivalent of our deer here uh, in terms of uh, the way the animal uh, operates in the area, in terms of uh, how it sort of wreaks havoc in, in certain grazing areas and its in, uh, interactions with wildlife. Uh, definitely, I think of more the deer connection when I think of navigating the roads and um, sort of accidents uh, and things like that. They could be a pest uh, as, as, as because they're natural prey uh, have now um, uh, become barricaded. But we're going to talk about that in just a moment. But the flora and fauna, so plants and animals, uh, are definitely uh, quite unique in Australia. This is an area that's long been isolated until humans uh, and large large scale human development has taken place just uh, not too long ago. And so this biodiversity that was there for uh, many, many years uh, has, has uh, had great established roots. Although again, humans doing a great job of, of sort of messing with uh, what was once uh, native or at least familiar to Australia, New Zealand and the rest of the South Pacific. And the environment, we're moving pretty quick. A human impact on the biosphere. We, if this isn't a narrative of the entire um, uh, course, humans have a profound impact on the biosphere and uh, we're ruining lives. But uh, let's be more positive than that. Uh, so, uh, but one thing that should be noted here is uh, global uh, climate change is the most important uh, narrative of this chapter when it comes to physical geography or this chapter in, in general. Global climate change. Global climate change. Uh, issues such as sea level rise and storm surges can be devastating. Well, no kidding. Um, 
sea level rise to a bunch of very small islands, some of them very densely populated, is quite troubling. Many of these island nations, major cities have been established as uh, ports and trading zones, so nevertheless, on the ocean themselves, these areas, because of storm surges and sea level rise, are quickly vanishing uh, and or flooding, having uh, a lot of problems. So again, global climate change as a result, sea level rise and storm surge, uh, definitely profound impact on uh, both human and, and uh, natural uh, features of the region. Australia has some of the world's highest greenhouse gas emissions per capita, that's important, per capita. Uh, however, Oceania as a whole, as an entire region, are uh, quite low in terms of emitters of greenhouse gas. So Australia largely just automobile uh, emissions connecting these, you know, these cities. Largely a string of cities in the southeast, but you know, it's quite a distance to get to Perth. Um, I guess it'd be worth noting that Australia, this again, this continent, uh, is the geographic size uh, of uh, the same geographic size of the lower uh, contiguous uh, United States. So the lower 48 or the contiguous United States, 48 states, Australia is about the same geographic size. I think I mentioned that later, but worth noting more than once. While Australia is an exporter of fossil fuels, largely to Asia, uh, the country aims to pursue renewable energy strategies uh, for themselves, so domestically. So Australia is pursuing cleaner energy uh, for, the, uh, for their uh, country themselves, uh, but still uh, some mine, fossil fuels, largely coal and things like that, still exporting that uh, to China and other places in South and East Asia, uh, but pursuing clean energy for themselves. Uh, geothermal and uh, otherwise. Food production. I thought this one was a pretty interesting subsection. This is probably one of my favorite parts. But dingoes, indigenous wild dogs of Australia, they prey on livestock, okay? So it's not hard to imagine. Uh, it's a, a wild dog like the African wild dogs uh, or, or wolves or things like that. Uh, so they prey on livestock uh, and, and so therefore that's a problem. People, farmers have their livelihood and uh, and what have you, they, they're not happy when this happens. So they built the dingo fence, uh, which is the world's largest fence, uh, about 3,500 miles uh, to separate sort of natural this sort of natural environment with dingoes and prey like that, and herding and grazing uh, lands and ranching and farming areas. So this sort of divide has uh, come to be. Nevertheless, whatever happens when you build a fence that size, uh, there's some negative ecological consequences uh, with that, just like the idea of the wall uh, on the Mexican-U.S. border uh, would have profound ecological impacts for uh, animals uh, to, to be able to freely uh, cross and, and roam within their natural habitats. Uh, there would certainly be a problem there when they could not freely uh, move about. This being said, uh, this dingo fence, so the dingoes are also a natural predator of the kangaroo, this fence uh, comes to be. Kangaroos found their way on the other side of the fence uh, with the livestock and such. They've learned to live in that area and they've got there and they have no natural predator in that area because the dingoes can't get to them and other things like that. And so now we have a huge boom in uh, kangaroo population uh, because of this, uh, this fence. Uh, so again, I think we've, we don't wanna belabor that point, but interesting nevertheless. So an interesting, another one, uh, there are 15 times as many sheep as there are people in New Zealand and three times as many cattle as there are people in New Zealand. So largely a grazing, a ranching type of nation in terms of its agriculture and food production. And it's got a lot of exports in that regard as well. Uh, so sort of when you think of New Zealand, it's not uncommon for a lot of people to think of a place like Ireland where you see a lot of green rolling hills, uh, that, that rainy atmosphere, some sheep. Uh, and so this, this new world versus old world, um, you know, colony versus uh, mother country idea with the, in the British Empire uh, sort of comes to mind for some people. So both Australia and New Zealand are top 15 wine producers in the world uh, as countries. Uh, Australia, uh, number four, uh, a wine producer in the entire world. Okay, so uh, behind uh, Italy, France, and Spain, then next Australia. 
New Zealand all the way down something like somewhere between 10 and 15. So not too, uh, too large, but nevertheless, pretty impressive uh, for where it is. And Australia, quite impressive, fourth largest wine producer in the world. And you can see where, uh, according to Wine Society here, uh, where these wine regions are, a little bit in and around the uh, city of Perth, but largely uh, the wine production coming all from southeast um, Australia. And if you remember, that's where the people are, that's where a lot of the people are living, and that's where the climate's most suitable for wine production. Invasive species. This is another interesting one. Uh, so the rabbit and the fox, what do I mean by that? So Europeans, uh, so Australia and New Zealand, settled by the British Empire, and uh, so it was colonized by the English. The English bring their rabbits along. Um, and, you know, the hunting, they're going to hunt the rabbits and whatnot. Well, little did they know that uh, the rabbit population uh, would just really take off, uh, you know, in a way that they probably could not predict. Uh, and so it, it, it left some problems for, well, for one, it, they ate up a lot of uh, food that was, uh, that at one point was, uh, did not have a uh, competition. So we had animals living in, uh, uh, we had in, indigenous uh, endemic species living in Australia and uh, they had no competition let's say, and, and the next thing we know, we have a lot of rabbits from, from Europe, from specifically from England, uh, come in and they're now competing for the same food. Uh, so natural, uh, natural species were, were starving and dying off. The rabbit population just continuing, continuing to take off. Uh, next thing you know, the British say, well, uh, let's release our European foxes uh, to kill the rabbits. And uh, that didn't go well either because then the fox population took off and it competed against other species. So it's really a, an idea that man should just really not mess with nature. It, it, probably a small lesson, uh, you know, with limited sort of intervention in the uh, natural ecosystem. Uh, but nevertheless, problems usually arise when we have our, our hands in things, but um, uh, probably oversimplifying that statement as well. But nevertheless, rabbits are brought in uh, and they, they you know, cause a great deal of problems to the natural ecosystem uh, that was present at the time of foxes, same way. Uh, moving on, uh, so this idea, only 23% of New Zealand remains forested. The rest of it was cleared for uh, grazing, herding, ranching, uh, and urbanization, uh, which isn't exactly an invasive species, but it just shows what we've done to the natural landscape, humans maybe as an invasive species, if you will. Uh, other than the, uh, the Maori people um, uh, there just 700 years ago. Cats in New Zealand, pretty interesting. Uh, if you ask me, uh, the common house cat, our, our, our pets out there, uh, kill upwards of 100 million birds every year in New Zealand. There's a lot of concern and complaints for that. Some people are calling for, oh, so the common house cat, so let me break that because that was, uh, we oversimplified. Uh, so the common house cat as a pet, uh, comes to the, the area, just like you can see in Tallahassee, Florida, uh, cats get away from people, and then we have a large feral cat population where we have a lot of wild, uh, these paradomesticated, where there were once domestic uh, house cats, and they've become semi-wild, if you will. They've been released, living on their own, even repopulating. Um, they're not quite wild, they're not a wild cat uh, in, in, in a total way, so they're these, these feral cats. And uh, so the same thing happens here, uh, in, in Australia too as well, but uh, the book's specifically talking about what's going on in, in New Zealand. They mentioned it happened in Australia with the rabbit and the fox, uh, but cats in New Zealand, a major issue. Uh, they become feral in a lot of ways, uh, so both domestic and feral cats kill about 100 million birds a year in New Zealand. So there's programs proposed uh, to sterilize um, uh, house cats and to, to call and to, uh, to, to, to get rid of. Uh, a lot of the feral cats or to sterilize those as well and so uh, there is this uh, this debate as well but still roughly 46 percent of the people of New Zealand still own uh, uh, house cats as pets so uh, that debate probably quite contentious but nevertheless uh, cats again not uh, native species of the islands uh, 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 and in this region quite a profound impact on the huge biodiverse uh, the huge biodiversity of, of bird species in and among the islands I've seen here a cat eyeing up a hummingbird. Not sure if it's photoshopped, uh, but 
uh, getting dangerously close uh, to proving our point. Uh, so that wraps up part one of, uh, of Oceania as a region. And uh, up next, we're going to be doing part two.